Welcome to EPG Patshala. As we all know that this era has been revolutionized and the reason is technology, technology and technology. We all are using technology in our day-to-day -day life and it is very much effect and we are very much affected by it every minute of our lives. Yes. But have you ever wondered how life would be without technology? What if we have something like offline learning, totally away from internet, away from technology? Well, if you are having a question mark on your face, better retain it because the answer is coming shortly. And there's also something known as blended learning. We need to have socio-economic status and equality all throughout. Living in a democracy, education is one aspect that can really change the vision, the empowerment of people. Here, in today's module, we will be dealing with what exactly is offline learning and how do we blend it to bring about an equality in the status of learning and eradicating all the issues that the haves and the have-nots still have in with them. Let us now move forward with our module. To initiate an organization, students and teachers into e-learning, it is very essential to move them gradually from traditional classrooms to e-learning classrooms in simple steps which makes it easier to accept. Offline learning and blended learning provides a solution to it. This is done by benefiting their bottom line. It enables instructors as well as instructional designers to develop skills needed for e-learning in small increments. It provides a solution to the problem of heavy cost and resources required for e-learning. Let us now understand what exactly is offline learning. The term online and offline have specific meaning with respect to computer technology. In general, online indicates a state of connectivity to the computer and the internet, while offline indicates a disconnected state. Offline learning is learning done through computer when it is not connected to the internet. Offline learning is a convenient way of learning without the need of any internet connection. Yes, so what we have to remember is offline learning is nothing but learning which takes place without the internet connection. There are certain ways in which offline learning can take place and they are offline browsing, offline storage and offline reader. Let us now understand all these aspects in detail one by one. One, offline browsing. Offline browsing, also known as offline Offline favorites is one of the special features of Internet Explorer. It allows saving single web pages through not an entire site. In the offline state, users can perform offline browsing where pages that they have previously been downloaded in the online state can be browsed. Yes, that is a special advantage of offline browsing. This can be useful when the connection to the internet is impossible or even undesirable. One such web browser capable of being explicitly configured to download pages for offline browsing is Internet Explorer, which all of us these days are very much familiar with. When pages are added to the favorite list, they can be marked as available for offline browsing, which will be available for the learner to read, refer, even in the state when the computer is not connected to the internet. So remember, offline browsing is equally important as the online browsing. Moving on to the next, offline reader or is also known as offline navigator is a computer software that helps a learner to download emails, news group posts or web pages making them available for reference when the computer is not connected to the internet. Offline navigators or offline readers are often useful for portable computers. Offline mail readers are computer programs that allows the users to read their mails with a minimum of connection time to the computer and to the internet by saving the messages for online reading. Third one is offline storage. Offline storage device is any storage medium which has to be inserted into a storage drive before it can be accessed by the computer system. Offline storage is also called as removable or detachable storage. The learning material or the mail is recorded usually in the secondary or the tertiary storage device and then it is physically disconnected. The device must be inserted or connected before a computer can access it once again. Some of the offline storage devices are as follows. First, floppy drive. Floppy drives are portable and are a universal file storage solutions. The standard size of a floppy is around 1.44 MB. Hard drive. The hard drive is the main area of storage 
on your computer which helps storing a large amount of data on your computer. Generally, the hard drive is fixed within the computer. It is usually removable but not easily portable. Storage capacity can range into the gigabytes also. Next we have is the super disk. Though super disks are similar to the floppy drive, they support very high density of disks. The super disk allows for a 120 MB capacity on one disk which is magnanimously huge. Coming to the fourth aspect, CD-ROM and CD rewrite table. Compact disk that is CD-ROM, compact disk read-only memory is an optical device or optical disk capable of storing large amount of data. CD rewritable drives allows the reusers to record information to a CD thereby providing an easy way to achieve the data or share the files. Coming to the next, DVD ROM and DVD rewritable. A DVD is a type of optical disk technology similar to the CD ROM. A DVD holds a minimum of 4.7 GB of data and are commonly used as medium for digital representation of movies and many other multimedia presentations that involves graphics. Next, USB flash drives. As we all know, USB drive is a very small portable flash memory card that plugs into the computer's USB port and functions as a portable hard drive. So all these above that we've discussed are some of the offline storage devices that you might already be knowing and using. Let us now move further on the advantages of using offline resources. 1. Portable In modern computers, most secondary and tertiary storage media are also used for offline storage. Offline storage is used to transfer information since the detached medium can be conveniently transported physically from one place to another. Hence, we can say that offline resources are very portable and easy to carry anywhere. Second, they are secure. In a case of disaster, if your original data gets destroyed, a medium in a remote location will be probably unaffected, thereby enabling the data recovery. Offline storage increases a general information security since it is physically inaccessible from a computer and therefore data confidentiality or integrity cannot be affected by computer-based attack techniques. So its security is an added point, added feature as compared to the online learning. Next point, it's economical. Indeed, if you connect to the internet via a dial-up modem and a standard telephone line, it can save a lot of money on your phone bills as well. So if you really think you have to manage onto money, this offline resource learning is very apt. Next, teacher-friendly. Using the sites in an offline state helps the teachers focus more on the specific materials, thereby giving control over the materials to the teachers. Thus, students have to focus on the material in front of them, which prevents them from straying onto any other site. Also, material that uses language, which is slightly complex or which teachers would like to adapt or select from, can be changed offline to tailor them to the students' needs. So as we have seen in detail, above are the advantages of offline learning. So with this, we wind up with the offline learning and let us now begin what is a new term that is known as blended learning. In modern times, with the invent of computer and internet, the idea of using technology in education got its importance. E-learning has emerged as the most popular version of education in Western countries. But serious errors and limitations can be seen regarding e-learning. In a country like India, the economic support is the biggest problem. Lack of social contact, lack of feeling of responsibility, promotion to materialism and lack of human touch are a few objections taken on e-learning. Therefore, purely classroom teaching or purely online learning cannot bring constructive transformation in Indian teacher education. Hence, we need to find a middle path to both the solutions. Proper coordination and meaningful integration of both these approaches is essential to bring about a revolutionary change in our system. Blended learning can become the path way of success towards that direction. The first generation of e-learning or web-based learning programs focused on presenting physical classrooms based instructional content over the internet. Whereas in the second wave of e-learning, increasing numbers of learning models that combine various delivery modes are used. Blended learning offers more choices with the effective way. So we need to understand that we need to blend the traditional as well as the e-learning and only taking one aspect that is the traditional or the e-learning 
will not suffice the Indian scenario. Let us now go on to the definitions of blended learning. Actually, it is not a new concept as we all know. In fact, in the Indian scenario, we have been using both e-learning and the traditional system of learning. So what is it that we have new here? But it has not been thought about and applied clearly appropriately till yet. This term, that is blended learning, was initially used in 1997 in United Kingdom. According to Graham Spanier, he says, it is the largest unknown trend in higher education. Blended learning is a mixture of online learning as well as the classroom learning that contains some of the facilities of online courses with the presence of face-to-face -face communication. Let us now go on to another definition set by by Rovai and Jordan in 2004. He says that blended learning is a combination of instructional modalities or a combination of delivery of media. It is also a combination of instructional methods. It is also a combination of online and face-to-face -face instruction. Blended learning according to T. Barker in 2005 means a learning program where more than one mode of delivery is used. If we see Picciano in 2006, he says there are two significant elements in defining blended learning and those are online and face-to-face -face instructions. So we can now summarize saying that blended learning approach combines the best elements of online and face-to-face -face learning. It is likely to emerge as the predominant model of the future and becomes far more common than either one alone. After having gone through the definitions of blended learning, let us now move on to the concept of blended learning. It basically involves four structures to combine mixed modes of web-based technology. To accomplish an educational goals, live virtual classrooms, self-paced instruction, collaborative learning, streaming video audio and text can be blend together with different combinations. This is the use of web-based technology. Next one is to combine various pedagogical approaches. To produce optimal learning outcomes, various pedagogical approaches like constructivism, behaviorism, cognitivism can be blended together with or without instructional technology. So here again we see that different approaches of teaching can be blended with the use of pedagogical approaches. Third, to combine any form of instructional technology, instructional technologies like CD-ROM, web-based training, films, etc. can be used face-to-face to lead instructional training programs. Fourth, to combine instructional technology with actual job tasks. Work experiences are blended together with learning experiences to create maximum and effective learning outcomes. Overall, the best mix of resources is used to provide an optimum learning experience for all the students. Blended learning can be described as a learning program where more than one delivery mode is being used with the objective of optimizing the learning outcome and the cost of program. Let us now go on with a few examples of blended learning. Make reference material available. Teachers can provide any reference material, for example, notes, reference books, videos, etc. online through blogs, emails, etc. Next could be put the assessment online and students can blend the teacher written notes and the online resources. It could also be to deliver pre-work online. It also involves providing online remedial teaching, which is nothing but remedial coachings. It can also be providing guidance, mentoring online and arranging expert lectures online. Now, since we are quite familiar with what definitions is it and what examples are of blended learning, let us now move a little forward and see the models of blended learning. Following are the four models that are used in schools today. One, flipped classroom. Flipped classroom Flipped learning is a modern approach to learning. It is opposite of that of the traditional classroom. In traditional classroom, the classroom time spent on lecturing to students, which is none other than the teacher-centered approach. Whereas in flipped model, this time is utilized for discussion to encourage individual learning and provide one-to-one -one help to students and also to improve student-teacher interaction. The instructional or teachable content is given beforehand to the students and still available in the class. Next is station rotation model. In a station rotation model, within a given course or subject, students are divided into different groups. Teacher fixed some learning situations or stations that is online learning, individual tutoring, project work, assignment, etc. Students rotate at fixed points in time between these different learning stations. In the station rotation model, students rotate through all of the stations. 
Third, lab rotation model. In a lab rotation model, students rotate at a fixed point in time between a classroom and the computer lab. Students learn online in computer labs also, whereas they are involved in various activities in classrooms simultaneously. In station rotation model, students are rotating within a given classroom, whereas in the lab model, they are actually rotating out to the learning lab where they are doing their online learning. The fourth model is flex model. Online learning is at the center of students' learning in the flex model. Here students are the doers. Students have flexible schedule of their learning based on their needs and fixed goals. Students get online learning experiences as well as offline face-to-face -face learning experiences. Face-to-face -face learning experiences are given through discussions, projects, mentoring, tutoring, etc. Most of the learning takes place online. Those were the four models that those are used in the schools today. Now let us move further and read what are the advantages of blended learning learning. First being maximum use of technologies and other resources. Blended learning allows and schools alike to make maximum use of technologies and other resources that they have available to them. This means that it allows schools to take a look at all the technologies and tools that they have and see how best it works to find out the greatest benefit to students and the organization even as they spend as little as they possibly can and still maintain the effectiveness of the teaching learning program. Next, the speed with which you reach thousands of people is unmatched by traditional methods as they can all be reached simultaneously without the restrictions of time and space. So it basically is concerning distance is eliminated. Next, challenges of using a purely online modality are eliminated. Very correct that not all the content can be properly delivered online. The challenges of using a purely online modalities are eliminated here when a blended approach is used. Hence, we say that it's a little more safer and sound to use as compared to online modalities. Next, traditional approaches where they work the best and applying technology related methods. That means one another advantage is that by making use of traditional approaches wherever they can and using technology wherever they are available, the most appropriate achievement of instructional goals can take place. Teachers by this way can avoid the exponential increase in costs that can accompany a complete switch to online methods only. It allows students to avoid costs that are incurred through travel, accommodations and many other expenses that are tied to students related to time and place. Next advantage being flexibility. Blended learning allows learners the flexibility not just with time but also with place. They can do their lessons anytime, anywhere as they have the continuous access to the course material until a meeting with the lecturer becomes compulsory. Next advantage is virtual office hours. It can make it easier to deal with educational administrations and communication with all the students. Virtual office hours makes tutors far more accessible than in a strictly face-to-face -face scenario. Moving on to the next advantage, learning needs and styles are catered. Very well said. Students get their learning needs and styles cater to whether they prefer online or face-to-face -face learning because it offers both in a single course. This leads to more interaction and active participation in discussion. So here we see the learner style could be interactive or be it isolation. The students feel far more comfortable and they can prefer traditional method or online learning method as well as offline learning method according to their needs. Next point, improvement in discussion. For sessions held online, the communication between teachers and student is open and everyone can benefit from it because everyone can view the responses sent by the teacher. These are frequent feedbacks from the teacher resulting in an effective learning environment. Some other advantages could be some lecturers experience an improvement in the quality of students' writing and discussion also. According to the 2009 study from the Department of Education, students who took all or a part of a class online performance test on an average then those taking the same course through traditional face-to-face -face interaction have performed better. That means students who mix online learning with traditional course, that means blended learning, have done a better job. Online resources are updated and upgraded from time to time. Thus students have access to unlimited up-to-date resources. We can now say that it helps to develop time management skills also and critical thinking skills also. Blended learning is flexible as it gives freedom to the students to choose time as per 
per their convenience. Having seen all the advantages, I'm sure we are all very much convinced of using offline as well as blended learning as the time requires. Now, as we all know, there is always a pros and cons attached to each of the following aspects. We also have certain disadvantages that are attached with the blended learning. Let us deal with them one by one. First, time consuming. Before a blended learning scenario can be considered ready for use, the learner has to do a long, detailed, extensive work. Preparation for startup is very little time and hence it becomes very much time consuming. Limited interactions. There can be limited contact between lecturer and students and so some of the dynamism that comes with face-to-face -face interaction can be lost. All students are not self-motivated. Remember, your students need to be motivated to participate actively in the learning process. Here, blended learning can be a hindrance. So one needs to keep in mind that with students and with our learners, a physical touch, a sense of face-to-face -face interaction plays a very important role for their motivation. 3. Students' Tendencies as a teacher, as an instructor, one needs to know their student really well. And in India today, we are catering to individual differences. Based on what students are used to, they often prefer the paper versions of the materials than to see them online. So, the face-to-face -face sessions in the blended programs usually have a comparatively more successful feel for the students. Sometimes, we even see students being very lazy to go online and prefer and refer to the materials those are available readily. They rather would prefer the traditional approach of teaching. Next, extra efforts from the part of teachers. The materials developed by the lecturers cannot simply be the same set they had developed for the handouts. Certainly, they are bound to make changes. They have to be reformatted so that they guide the students through a process of independent study when they are not in a face-to-face -face session. This additional task requires lecturers' appreciation and is worth it. Teachers always need to be ready with the plan for the students who would need additional help. Next disadvantages, students sometimes feel that they are given more work to do when distance modalities are used because we feel that technology is there everywhere and anytime since they can access the information, they can definitely do their assignments at any time, any place. So this might turn off the students and their interest. Blended learning is literally dependent on the technical resource and online information. These tools need to be reliable, easy to use and updated in order to give a meaningful learning experience. So we as teachers need to keep in mind that when we are using blended learning, apt resources and apt tools are used. Blended learning needs stable and adequate internet connection which might not be available or which might not be possible always. The school or the institution should have adequate infrastructure and all the facilities required for computer-based instructions. Sadly, but today, not all the schools or education institutions are very well equipped with internet or technology. So this becomes a taboo in many of these instructional programs. Another disadvantage could be information literacy. The literacy is a must for blended learning or it will lead to a significant barrier for students who wish to get access to the course material. We need to keep in mind that out of 100 students, not all 100 are capable or comfortable using internet, technology or many other gadgets or devices. Even if they are comfortable in using, they don't really know sometimes as to where do we navigate to get the resources. Here, teachers need to act as a proper guide and students should have a proper training. Another and the last disadvantage could be students generally wait and watch all the videos in one sitting rather than on a regular basis. The use of lecture recording technology might result in students falling behind on the resource material. Since they have the availability right now, since they have the time right now, they might just put on their iPads, their uh, technology and their gadgets and could start refining with the, through the notes. But we need to remember not each and every student are self-motivated or cannot be self-directed. For this, we need to give them different videos and different settings so that they are in touch of education and their resources on time. So we are through with the disadvantages. We have seen what blended learning is. We have seen what offline learning is. It's very correctly said. We cannot get, go to either of one side only. In today's time and being in the uh, Indian education society, we need to realize that there are certain, certain issues that we are facing at the moment. Issue of face-to-face -face interaction, or be it issue of mentoring face-to-face -face or having that physical touch with the teacher and the instructor. So let us not forget the traditional classroom or the offline learning is equally important, is equally applicable in today's era in the classrooms as our blended learning is. 
So always take a middle step and be prudent enough to give offline task or assignment or an online task depending upon the learners. And never forget the individual difference that exists, that persists in the classroom. Thank you.